there is one specific GPU that NVIDIA really wants you to get. I mean, I'm gonna go right ahead and say it. Look at this performance of the RTX 4090. If this is gonna be true, and we have to wait for reviews, of course, these are gonna be NVIDIA's own numbers and benchmarks. This is the new Overwatch 2. Look at the performance difference between an RTX 4090 over 500 FPS and its nearest competitor, the 4080 16 gigabyte. That is a significant difference in FPS. In fact, last generation, we never saw this type of difference when you were comparing the 3090 and the 3080. In fact, for most of us, the performance across many games were actually very similar. Take a 3080, the 10 gigabyte, the 12 gigabyte, take a 3080 Ti, 3090. Those were all actually very, very similar within a few percentage points of each other. Even the 3090 Ti, which of course was the fastest, wasn't a huge difference in most games and definitely nothing like we're seeing here. If this is going to scale out in many different games, especially when we've seen Nvidia themselves talk about DLSS 3.0, which if your game supports it, such as Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I happen to play that game and I know how bogged down even a 3090 Ti can get if you're playing at high resolution like 4K or triple screen. That game really, really hoggles a whole of the resources and judging by what Nvidia said, the performance difference is really staggering, specifically on the RTX 4090. Now, from what we're seeing, Generally, of course, when NVIDIA releases a GPU, they're going to, you know, pump it up as much as they can. But I don't remember seeing performance numbers this drastic compared to even the same generation. We're talking about the 4080 16 gigabyte, which is supposedly going to be one of the best high end GPUs out there. It's going to be second best to the 4090, of course, until AMD brings their RDNA 3. But for now, the 4090 seems like it has a pretty large gap between all of the other GPUs. Of course, this is easily going to leave some space for another GPU in between the 4080 and the 4090. You could say a 4080 Ti would probably be the most reasonable GPU, maybe at 16 gigabytes as well with a VRAM. It may just have more CUDA cores and just be faster in general, or maybe even 20 gigabytes of VRAM. That would place it pretty perfectly in between the RTX 4090 and the 4080 with 16 gigabytes. As you guys can see, the 12 gigabyte 4080 just seems to perform more and worse and when you compare it to the other GPUs. It is certainly not on the same level at all. Um, a lot of people have talked about how this is not even really a 4070 class GPU because of its specs are severely cut down and I tend to agree with them. This is not a 4080. It should not have been called that. Nvidia probably just gave it that name because they really need to squeeze out all of the existing RTX 3000. Not to mention leave space for an actual 4070 to come out in the future that of course if this is a 4080 we know the 4070 is going to be less performant than this it might be 12 or 10 gigabytes of vram maybe i don't know it's going to be even more cut down than this which definitely is going to leave even more room for rdna3 and maybe even intel way down the line to come in with some type of high-end product to compete with them and now let's hear a word from our sponsor priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. And now back to the video. So yes, the 4090 does seem like it's going to perform really, really well. And of course, it is also much more expensive than everything else. Of course, RTX 3000, it absolutely really demolishes all of those prices, even though the 3090 and 3090 Ti was technically more expensive at $19.99, those GPUs are kind of long gone now. Nobody's buying them for those prices. They're going as low as $10.99 for a 3090 Ti, maybe $9.99 in some cases. So the 4090 at $15.99 all the way up to $19.99 is around the most expensive one that I've seen so far. And this brings us to my next point, why Nvidia wants you to buy this specific GPU. It's been coming out, at least with its you know, initial, not in stock, but an initial listing on various websites. I don't remember there being this many last generation before the actual release date. I remind you guys, we're still a little bit away from the release date. That's going to be October 12th. So that's going to be well into next week. And basically almost every single major retailer has already listed the GPU as well as the prices. Of course, Newegg listed them, uh, you know, Micro Center just listed them as well. Even Best Buy listed the GPUs in 
including the Founders Edition, which, you know, comes in at $15.99. They really want you to buy this GPU. Here are a few things that you can take as hints. First, they're all being listed very early. Of course, you can't buy them yet or, or even pre-order them. You have to actually wait until October 12th, which I think maybe 9 in the morning or something like that. We'll check the exact time as we get closer, you know, Eastern time. But you can't buy them yet, but at least you can see them and plan them. And maybe that NVIDIA might think it's going to make people anticipate purchasing this GPU more. And the reality will set in that, yes, they're definitely coming. And the pricing is going to be the second reason why NVIDIA really wants you to buy this GPU. First, let's set a realistic expectation of the price. Yes, $1599 is really expensive for a GPU. Not everybody's going to want to buy this. It's extraordinarily expensive. In fact, a few generations ago, under $1,000 was where all of the high-end GPUs were. Occasionally, over $1,000, you would have something like a Titan-class GPU. So to have something like this, the 4090 at $1,599, it definitely is very expensive, especially in today's market with the macroeconomic conditions. Don't get me wrong. And we also saw a similar issue with Ryzen 7000, all of the motherboards and DDR5, very expensive. The CPUs are still very expensive. Nobody actually bought on launch day like there was nobody there they had to give away free ram at micro center for people to even come in and buy so we have to wonder is this going to happen as well to nvidia you know that they've been watching the rise and launch even though those are cpus it still tells you what demand is like for gaming components ryzen 7000 is a high-end enthusiast type of uh, you know purchase such as the rtx 4090 that, that will pair perfectly with a high-end cpu like ryzen 7000 so nvidia certainly has been watching that and you can tell by the pricing strategy. I remember when the 3090, eventually when we could see all the prices, when it occasionally was in stock, there were many GPUs over $2,000, including the Asus Strix, which was $2,299. Here, the 4090 Strix is $1,999, which is significantly cheaper than any of the 3090s or 3090 Ti's, and it's going to perform considerably better, not to mention have an all-new design with its cooler. Now, $1,599 is already expensive. $1,999, that's even more expensive that's going to be very you know much fewer people that buy that enthusiast level only but 1599 is still expensive and the 3090 being sort of the biggest example here i guess they don't think it's that expensive but who knows how the launch is going to be like is it going to be like the ryzen 7000 launch where nobody buys or is there still enough pent-up demand for gpus that it's actually going to make a difference even at these astronomically high prices you can see that almost all of the aib models like msi of course, EVGA is no longer here, but, you know, Asus, Zotac, Gigabyte, they're all very close to that 1599 MSRP. Some of them might be 1699, 1749, but none of them are going over 2000, not even the Strix, which usually is really, really expensive, even more than shown here for the past generations. So they're all staying within sort of that stratosphere of 1599. That shows you that NVIDIA really wants you to buy this GPU, and they know if they price it too high you won't buy it if it's like ryzen 7000 nobody's going to buy it they're just going to sit on the shelves and people are going to go for much cheaper 3090 ti's and gpus like that after all if you're not in the market for the 4090 a 3090 ti at a significant discount may perform even better than the cheap 4080 12 gigabyte by cheap i mean just cheapest because at 899 dollars msrp it certainly is not a very cheap gpu but 3090 ti will have twice the vram and it's not going to be quite as limited with all the other specs like that GPU has been by NVIDIA. So we can see two things here. NVIDIA and all their partners are listing these GPUs very early. So everybody has an idea of what they want to get. They are aware of them. They know which retailer they want to go to. And of course, they see the designs and the pricing. The pricing is going to be a really important thing here. They can't go below $1,599, at least not yet. But eventually they may if nobody buys them. So the pricing is very close to $1,599 for all of the models. Only some, like the Strix, like I mentioned, are really expensive. But that's usually the case every generation. For most other GPUs that typically would carry a two dollars or $300 markup, like on the 3090, you're seeing them here for almost MSRP, meaning NVIDIA wants you to buy this GPU and they know they have to price it well for people to actually buy it. So we're going to have to see what happens. We're going to know right away the first day. If these GPUs have plentiful stock, if nobody's lining up to buy them, then of course, we're definitely going to know that it's going to be a fly
co-op, but if people buy them, and remember, NVIDIA can also limit demand artificially, they may not have released a huge amount of these GPUs. they rather maybe sell out of a certain number of them and make it seem like they're still in demand, and the next wave, they'll you know be able to produce more GPUs, and that may up the hype for these GPUs. So that's why important for you guys to subscribe, stay tuned to the channel, because I'll let you know little nuances and little details like that as I see them on the market to know if the shortage is going to be real if it happens or if you're pretty safe to buy a 4090 at any time because they're readily available and if perhaps you should wait and get a much cheaper price as we saw with the 3090 ti all right guys so remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video